Hey guys, Sam from Infinite Me here and wishing you a happy new year from the Infinite Me crew. So today we've decided to do something a little different for this video. We are going to be doing what we at first thought of a tutorial video, but in the end it's more of a guide to beginners video. We are going to be doing something that I'm quite familiar with. I've not really done many tutorial videos, but I'd like to give it a shot to start the new year. I'll be doing a beginner's guide for video editing because that is something that I'm quite familiar with as I am the video editor for this channel. Of course, I do delegate my job as editor to other Infinite and crews so I can't take full credit for it. However, I will be covering several main fundamental points to get you guys started whether you want to do it as a hobby or be a professional, it's up to you guys. I'm just here to get you a general idea of the important fundamental points and features of video editing. So I'll be covering 8 points. The 8 points I'll be covering would be 1. Trimming 2. All your features 3. Key That'll be RGB screens 4. Masking 5. Key framing 6. Motion tracking 7. Visual effects and 8. Quick simple photoshopping for thumbnails. I'll be doing a general idea of video editing on all softwares but I will be doing my examples on Infilm Pro 2017 which is rather out of date now. <laughs> as they now have a more up-to-date version of HitFilm. As aforementioned, I did say that I have never done teaching videos or tutorial videos or guide videos, whatever you call it. I was thinking of calling it a tutorial video, as I said before, but then when I was looking through it, it's not much of a tutorial video because I, I can't trick you guys into saying it's a tutorial video. So I'm going to say it's more of a beginner's guide to give a general overview and to get you to be aware of the keywords so it'll be easier to look it up on YouTube and Google. I'm going to be putting up a poll in this video just to see whether is it useful for you guys and stuff like that. Bruh. It'll be up here in the top, you'll probably see it now popping up. If it is very useful, I might do another video of this. Just pop any questions down in the comment section and I will try to cover it in another video. As you probably notice, I usually do gameplays and vlogs, so this is a new start, so I do hope it is useful. Let's get into it, shall we? Number one, trimming. Trimming is probably one of the most important factors in video editing because you got to admit that there'll be many times you'll find something in your video that you're not satisfied with and that is completely unnecessary in your video. Such as, you gotta start recording before you even do your intro in the first place. So you gotta trim that and neaten it up. So over here, I do have several clips that I recorded during my editing for several other videos. In this video, you probably recognize this if you've been following my channel. It is Star Wars Battlefront 2 Beta Part 9 gameplay. As you can see, I am running through the video and I scale it carefully, look at it and switch frame by frame and then trim it down and it's quite simple actually. We're using the Hitman Film software, the button left hand side where you see the editor is, is the cutting tool. So you want to go to the one on the top and that one where I click, you see the one highlighted blue by now. It is a cutting tool so then you will locate it in your composite shot. However, you don't have to cut it in your composite shot. You can also cut it in your editor. In my vlogs, I have been cutting it in my editor because there is not been necessary, unless I'm talking, then I put it into a composite shot and trim it there. You don't necessarily have to trim it in your composite shot because it can get a bit messy, especially some of the objects in your composite shot and it can get a bit glitchy depending on your graphics card and CPU. However, the basic point of trimming is you want to get something like this, which is a full video, uncut necessary bits, and then you want to trim it all the way like this, where it is much more neater and much more entertaining in a sense. So for example here you see this is the layout of my video editing software HitFilm Pro 2017. The cutting tool will definitely be around here. You should be able to find it. It should look like this. It will be called the slice tool or the C key. You can use it and you can begin to cut. You will notice that your mouse icon will change to like a slice icon. In my composite shot, say in my intro, intro for this video, um, you will find the slice tool again here. You will be able to trim like that. You might want to relocate stuff and to return back to the mouse you can either go here or click V. However, in different softwares everything will be slightly different so I will not exactly say that it is a C key or something like that. But if you want to hit from simply just follow that, it is very easy. If you're using any other softwares like Adobe, iMovie, and Final Cut Pro, just simply play with it. It's, it's not really necessary to go look around on the internet to find out oh, where is this key, where is that, where is this. It's actually very very basic. They always have a trimming tool so you don't have to worry at all about the trimming. But just keep an eye that trimming is a very important thing. And I've noticed like there are some YouTubers that just starting out, they, they don't trim their videos. 
which is understandable, they're quite new to the idea of YouTubing. But it is great to trim and to actually make this a bit more entertaining in a sense. However, my video is not really entertaining because my commentary is not really entertaining according to my speculations. However, I cannot be certain that that's the case. So that covers uh, trimming. Number two will be audio features. Audio features is definitely really, really important as you want to give it a more diverse video. Whether you're doing filming, gameplay videos, or you're just doing vlogging, vlogging is good. You want to add some music to it, or you just want to have good audio. Audio features is a very handy tool, especially when you're doing voiceovers or you're putting soundtracks. You just want to keep an eye that you don't want your music to all of a sudden pop in out of nowhere and drop all of a sudden. Popping in out of nowhere from mute to zero decibels can hurt the audience ears. It's not very pleasant for the audience. You want it to be as pleasant as possible. So what I have to give you a few tips and tricks for such to have your audio fade in, fade out. Whatever video editor you're using, it may come with already a preset where you'll fade in, fade out. But then usually the presets are quite limited and you're only allowed to put it in certain areas and you can't drop it anytime you want. And that is not very flexible. So what you can do is also key it to come in and come out and move in whenever you want. So what I have here is I'm going to be placing a composite shot right here. So I put this lightsaber shot that I did for this video which I will cover later on and I want some audio going in. So I'm going to sounds and I click link and bring it drag it in. Now of course it's music already from NCS, NCS release and it's royalty free so you can actually grab this one. I'll drop a link down below to link you guys to NCS. Link is a nice song. But that is not the appointment for this video. My point is to add music all of a sudden. You can see the meter jumps very high up to 2 decibels that will definitely hurt years. So what I'm going to do is in the hit film you'll probably find a audio mixer tab. If it's not there, what you do is you go to workspace and you'll find audio mixer around here. Just tick the box and you just place it in one. Just click and drag and all that. So if you want to see my layout, my layout is slightly different from other people's layouts. So just keep that in mind and that people just like to rearrange their workspace to a much more comfortable. You don't exactly have to follow. So what I'm going to do is audio. So it's an enable and disable animation. They call it animation, but I'll just say key it because it's very similar to keyframing. Start from negative 60, that's the lowest it can be. It's almost mute, but it's not exactly mute. If you actually up your volume like really, really high, you'll still be able to hear it. And you want to turn this on so that you'll be able to see how it works so I would just zoom in to make it much more visible and then there's my last keyframe where the audio starts at negative 60 decibels so I'm gonna bring it to around here and bring the audio up to zero decibels so instead of dragging I'm gonna just type in zero and you will notice around here the audio will then rise. However, I'm not be able to let you hear how the audio sounds like when I'm recording this video because I am having a bit of trouble with my software Soundflower. Soundflower is very useful when you're recording audio in your screen recording. But that is something I'll cover in another video. So next we have Audacity. If you're doing a voiceover recording, I record my audio separately in a Zoom H1 handy recorder. The cameras can record your audio, but there's not exactly the best because it's more primarily focused on the visuals. So I do record it separately so then I can edit and it's much more flexible. Even the microphone, the audio is not perfect still. There's still the reverb, there's noise, you hear the static noise in the back and there might be unwanted sound like I'm hearing a lot of unwanted sound right now because I'm monitoring my audio right here. That's when you open the software Audacity. Audacity is a very very useful program. In this clip that I recorded quite some time ago, I zoom in, I highlight everything, then you go to effect you to normalize everything to zero decibels because sometimes you're very quiet and won't be at exactly zero decibels. And then you just highlight the silent area where it's very tiny, you know, there's a little bit of noise. You just locate the noise that you don't want, put it as a noise profile, go to effect and go to the noise reduction. Step two, then you apply the noise reduction and cancel out the noise. After it has finished applying, then you will notice that the gaps in between of the audio, you will reduce all the noise and stuff like that. So that is audio features. Number three. King RGB screens. Oh, oh wow, look, I am in space. Green screens is probably one of the most widely used feature in video editing because say you want a certain background like you see here PewDiePie, he's in space. 
and then he's inside someone's house and then stuff like that and it's very very useful say you're doing filming but you can't be at a certain location you want to film so you can use green screen when you're putting green screen you have to bear in mind that you have to be careful with the hue but it doesn't have to be green screen it can be red it can be blue as long as it's within the rgb scale green screen is more common to use because it's a color that not everyone will use unless of course you're outside and there's a green around you or there's green props the thing about green screen is if you chose green screen and you happen to be wearing a green shirt that's not going to be useful because you're going to end up keying out your shirt and then you will look like a floating head in the video so you have to bear in mind what you're wearing and what props is around you so you have to be careful with your colors yeah good job man wow you're like super smart and stuff so for example you probably noticed in my videos i always have this drop a like down below and share this video with your friends and family and perhaps even subscribe to the channel if you recall watching my videos you will notice that and you're probably wondering how I do that? Where did I get those stuff? Well, actually, I made a template. So over here, you will notice this subscribe to us template that I have made. And you will notice a green background because I chose as a green screen so that when I plop it in, I just cancel out the green. So in my intro, you will probably notice I simply drag, plop the subscribe, and you'll notice that it covers now my entire video. Now that it covers my background, you can't see me talking at all. So what happens is if you're on hit film, you go to effects, go to keying. Now, keying is the keyword you need to use. So if you're on a different software such as Adobe Premiere or After Effects or maybe on Final Cut Pro. Keying is somewhere else, you have to look for it. Usually it will be either color difference key, keying or blue screen or red screen. It's one of those keywords, you just look it up on the internet if you can't find it. Just have a play around and this is just to give you a general idea of what you're doing. So I go to color difference and then you'll notice it disappears immediately because under the controls panel in color difference you'll notice the screen color has been set to green already. However, you set it to red, you see it comes back because it cannot find the red in it. And if you select blue, nothing happens because I'm using a green. So just make sure that the green that you're using happens to be this sort of green as it will usually look for the hue. If your hue is slightly different, you will notice that a little bit of green will start Bruh. to still appear at the back. So you would have to be a bit careful how you do your green screen. Finally, that's all I have for green screen. Just bear in mind that you have to be careful with the green, whether there's any other green objects around you and any other objects that same color as your keying screen. And just be aware of that or else you end up like PewDiePie wearing green headphones and keying out his headphones. He's got a hole in his head. Four, masking. Masking is very, very important in my opinion. If you've been following the Infinite crew doing gameplay videos, you'll probably notice that there is this box in the top. Currently, I'm in maybe in a 720p resolution screen. And all of a sudden, there's this box coming in, like all the way in, like falling in my hands. And then you'll be noticing, whoa, on the inside box. It's a very useful tool, especially when you're doing something like that. You don't want to have the full screen because the camera always records in a widescreen resolution and sometimes you just want it into a square. Mm -hmm. So a masking can be useful for that. Masking can also do like freehand masking. You can just practically cut out the entire body, but because that can be a bit hard, especially if you want the masking to follow a person, say the moving character, the freehand masking will not be suitable unless you're doing a still image then that's better i will probably cover that a bit more maybe in the quick simple photoshop if i this masking is a very useful tool so you see in the clip i'm showing how the process works is you select the video you see a rectangular mask button on the side of the viewer or press the r key if you want you just simply click the rectangular mask or you can if you want you can go for an ellipse mask which will make it more round and of course there is the freehand mask all you have to do is select the video that you want to mask and then simply click drag across the video and then you'll be done and then all you do is drag the mask wherever you want you can even invert it and practically puncture a hole right through your video if you want that's up to you if you're on Adobe programs or Apple programs you might not find it exactly where I just mentioned because that is more for a hit film but if you look around you might be able to find a masking tool if you can't find it however just search it on maybe Google or YouTube type down your software name and then you just simply type in masking so number five keyframing keyframing is practically one of the most useful things ever you probably notice when i say hey guys sam from internet is here and then you'll notice the camera moves in well that is very very simple i'm actually not moving the camera of course i'm more of keyframing right there so keyframing is a very very easy tool to use and is very very useful. So you probably notice in this video I say hey guys Sam from Infinite here. So I just go back and then I just find where I say Sam from Infinite here because it's not on the 3D plane. I should have put on the 3D plane before. You just have to go to this area here to locate the 3D plane. 
then the camera will immediately pop up. Then the camera you just go to transform position and you'll notice that there are key buttons inside that allows you to keyframe it. That is for HitFilm though, but if you're looking for Adobe and other softwares, they'll be located elsewhere. You start the keyframe there because you want to create a path for your object to go from here to there. That is the main goal for keyframing. You can also position them in different ways. You can add more keyframes in the middle to make it more fancier and stuff. But if you're creating like a simple path, like this line to that line, this is very easy. You don't want to make it too complicated unless you are making it complicated. If you want to go to multiple locations, then you might want to position your keyframes properly. Just play around with it and then you'll get the idea. So I will start with a simple path, like what I usually do. So I go, hey guys, Sam from Infinitum here. I usually have the camera come in and come out again. So I usually go three frames forward and then I will now use the dolly button on the active camera to zoom in up to the point I want it so then you will notice that it will go like this and then after that I will just replicate that if you're on the Apple computer just command C command V and then you three frames forward replicate the first keyframe and it should move like this very very simple and very very useful as well keyframing can also be useful for other things you'll probably notice it if you want some ideas you just go look on the internet you'll find that there are many different useful ways to use keyframing that is the keyframing I do sometimes instead of using the camera I also move other objects such as face cam or any objects that I just want sliding right in. That's keyframing. Number six, motion tracking. Motion tracking makes things way easier. So if you're doing keyframing and you're following things like you're using visual effects like a lightsaber head for example, which I show in this clip here, you'll see that I'm tracking the tip of the hilt of my lightsaber. I create a point to follow the hilt. It is very, very useful, especially if you're doing filming and you're putting something like glowing eyes like I'll show right now. I, my eyes are glowing. And you'll notice that I move a bit, my head is moving a bit. And it can be very hectic if you're just doing keyframing, you're practically falling frame by frame by frame by frame. And it's not practical, so motion tracking makes it a lot easier. You just have to create a track and then you should find a track panel on the side. HitFilm gives tutorials on motion tracking, so I'll put a link for HitFilm and all you have to do is look around the video playlists and you should find motion tracking somewhere on there. Just remember the keyword motion tracking. If you're on Adobe and Final Cut Pro, motion tracking is somewhere. As you see with my lightsaber clip, it was a much easier way to just expand my lightsaber and have my lightsaber follow where my hilt is going at the same time. But you also have to be aware of the tip of your blade from the hilt. You gotta make sure it follows along with it. Number seven, visual effects. Visual effects is something everyone will probably use along the way in video editing. However, not every software will have visual effects. HitFilm has been very, very generous with the amount of presets they have of visual effects and stuff like that, such as audio spectrums, as you can see in my end plate. You probably notice in NCS, they have audio spectrums there just to make the video more stylish when they introduce music. However, there is other softwares that have plugins that is very, very useful for your video, and depending on the software, it might be compatible. I can recommend one, Red Giant. Red Giant is very useful for Adobe, and the best thing is Universe 2.2 is now compatible with Film Pro 2017, so I'm very, very happy about that. You'll probably notice in Ava Ryan's videos, his editing is crazy compared to most YouTubers. You can notice his video transitions, there's always this glitch effect, it's very very fancy. However, to actually replicate that from scratch, it is quite hard. You have to create composite shots, put grading, find images, place them together. It will take forever. That's why the plugins are very very useful, especially if you have a deadline to post this video. However, most plugins you'll probably find that they're not free. I do not recall seeing any free plugins yet. What? If you're not doing this professionally and just a hobby, and you're not earning much money, I do not recommend too much plugins just yet until you are very confident, but that is your decision to make. There's not much to cover for visual effects as not every software comes with visual effects. If you're using iMovie, I'm sorry, iMovie is not a type. You just have to go look for another software. They all cost money besides iMovie. I can't really show much tutorials on visual effects as I'm doing a general overview of video editing for all softwares. I am, however, just using HitFilm as an example. Finally, number eight. Quick, simple photoshopping for thumbnails. HitFilm has allowed you to export images. You just go to options at the top and click export frame. As you can see, Abe Ryan's thumbnails, they're crazy, man. However, I think he uses Photoshop, so that is one thing that is not a video editor. But HitFilm allows you to do maybe like a quick thumbnail. You want to make your thumbnails a bit more attractive to look at so that you attract audiences if you're doing YouTube, for example. Usually, it's just quick, simple, but I usually get it out of hand, as you notice in my thumbnails, but that is not the point, right? Play around and make it more satisfying to look at. That covers practically all eight points. We covered trimming, 
audio features, keying, masking, keyframing, motion tracking, visual effects, and photoshopping. That is the main fundamentals you beginners will need to even get a head start in video editing and to really become real pro. I'm not exactly a real pro myself, but I do have enough experience that I would consider myself able to give you guys a guide video. And I might make tutorial videos depending on how many questions I get in the comment section and whether my poll gets enough yes, it was helpful. So, Happy New Year again guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, why not drop that like rating down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. And perhaps you can subscribe to the channel to join us on our journey on YouTube. I'm Sam from Infinitum, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.